All right. Uh, next up tonight, we're going to move to Illinois. Champaign, the Fighting Illini hosted Marquette in uh, what I deemed the game of the night. I know the Champions Classic was uh, obviously huge matchups on paper, but truly, I was very excited to watch what would happen in this game. Uh, Tyler Kolick was supposedly banged up. Tyler Kolick was the best player on the floor is what actually happened. He had 24 points, four assists, six rebounds. Every time you looked up, he was controlling the game, maestro type things. Carter and I did not watch the first half of this game. I don't know what Sweeney saw, but we we did not see the first half. We watched the entire second half live from the FanDuel Sportsbook at uh, the United Center. And, I mean, man, from the moment we tuned in, Tyler Kolick was dominating the game. You've been a Kolick skeptic his entire career, especially because he was a letdown against your team in March last year. Were you impressed with Kolick tonight? I came away thinking that because Tyler Kolick had a jammed right thumb, my Michigan State Spartans were ranked the number four team in the country. <laughs> if his right thumb isn't jammed, he might pack us up in that game. He really might. I mean, he was he was all over the place. Like as you watch the game, he controlled every facet of the game, and honestly, he was pro- he was hobbled in this game, and he was still able to control the game in every facet. Um, and Marquette as a team, I just thought looked great, and then in a very tough environment, like we all the three of us here have seen games in State Farms, and like we know how rowdy it gets there, the Orange Crush and everything like that. Like that would that's a tough place to win a basketball game in my eyes. So like it. It was just impressive by Marquette. I will say that I was fairly disappointed with, uh, I mean, not Illinois as a whole, but a lot of what I thought Illinois was going to be this season was it's going to ride on Terrence Shannon and it's going to ride on Coleman Hawkins. Terrence Shannon, uh, good tonight. I wouldn't say really good. I think even Terrence Shannon himself after the game said he could have been better just because he holds himself to a higher standard. Unfortunately, Coleman did not show up tonight. He didn't in a game that I thought he could have showed up. I really thought that he could have took the challenge of going up against Oso. And uh, if I had to pick a winner of the battle, unfortunately, I would have to pick Oso just because Coleman did not show up until late in the second half. And, you know, there were some decisions made down the stretch by other players on the team. uh, And (laughs) Marquette was was able to get the win. Um, but I'm still feeling good about Illinois' basketball team. I will say that. To be fair, I don't think it's a decision here. I think this is a knockout. I think, like, if you're doing do, – who won the front court battle? Is it Coleman Hawkins or Oso? Oh, no, Oso, Oso won. Yeah, I don't I don't think you need to rule a decision. Oh, okay, no, 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 you were okay. acting like there's there's not. Oso my, was the better fault, player also. tonight. Uh, yeah, Coleman, Coleman kind of no-showed, pretty much entirely no-showed. He was two for nine from the floor. Uh, he had a lot of mistakes, which obviously have been come to be associated with Coleman Hawkins' bad games. Uh, it, it, here's my thing with Illinois. I thought Marquette was really good tonight to start. Like I, I don't, I don't think this is an indictment on Illinois being a bad team that they lost this game at home. I thought Tyler Cook was phenomenal, and Marquette showed the stuff of a team that won the Big East regular season and won the Big East tournament. Like this is a very good basketball team that people have somehow come to doubt in the off season because they lost Omax and because Tyler Cook was hurt in March. Like the, the team has been dominant in every regular season that we've seen in the last 12 months. Uh, Illinois, on the other hand, to me is a team that much like many Brad Underwood, Illinois teams don't know what their identity is yet. And right now what they know unequivocally is true is that Terrence Shannon is the star of this team. He's going to be the one that has to carry them night in and night out. He was good tonight. He had 21 points, six for 16 from the floor. He hit three threes. Marcus Damask was his running mate tonight, 18 points, three threes. Everything was good. Outside of those two guys, they didn't get much. They got Luke Goody off the bench. Luke Goody hit shots. But, I mean, Ty Rogers played 29 minutes, did not stuff the stat sheet, had a wide open dunk with a minute and a half left in the game. That he should have dunked. He didn't dunk. He kicked out to a contested Lou Goody. It was Ben Simmons-esque. And I I don't know what you're doing with him on the floor if he's not going to dunk an uncontested dunk. Uh, Gary A was, I, I mean, non-existent as a scorer tonight. He did have 10 rebounds, give him credit. But I just feel like the more I look at Illinois, when they play good teams, not bad teams, when they play good teams, this is a team without a point guard, and this is a team without a center. 
And I don't think you can have both of those things at once. I think you can have one of them and make shift your way around it. Tonight with how Coleman played, you can't have a team with no point guard and no center. Yeah, it's 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 about Coleman. I mean, Coleman had five turnovers compared to three assists tonight. He was two for nine for the field. And this is not a matchup. Like, I, I'm willing to give Coleman Hawkins the benefit of the doubt when he plays the five and he's matched up with a Hunter Dickinson or he's matched up with a Zachy, right? And he's taking a beating every time down the floor. Like, if there's a game for Coleman Hawkins to say, like, look how skilled I am, look how I can play on the perimeter, it's Oso, right? Oso, Oso is what every Illinois fan has always dreamed that Coleman Hawkins would be, which is a guy who can pass like crazy, create in the short roll, create like, like, be a dynamic offensive player without having to score the basketball every time down the floor. And Coleman is that guy 35% of the time, 40% of the time. There are moments, right? Coleman Hawkins had an awesome game against Illinois in the charity game, or Kansas in the charity game. Sorry, guys. It's 145. More. <laughs> like he was like he was really good. And you I watched that game and I said, like, look, we, we can indict Kansas, whatever. I was like, Coleman Hawkins and Terrence Shannon both play well. Coleman Hawkins and Terrence Shannon make nine threes. Illinois is probably one of the best teams in the country, right? Like that group, when they play like that, they're not getting beat. Tonight we saw good Terrence Shannon and bad Coleman Hawkins. And bad bad Coleman Hawkins is not beating high-end competition, right? They just don't have enough juice, right? I mean, I, I think it was smart of Brad Underwood to build this team with more a more clear hierarchy, right? Like they have defined roles. They have lower usage guys who can shoot the basketball. They have, um, you know, this team is, it's Terrence Shannon, it's Coleman Hawkins, and it's guys filling their role around those two guys. And that's that's a smart building strategy because I think last year, culturally, it was hard to have all those personalities. But it does set you up to live and die with Coleman Hawkins. And when you live and die with Coleman Hawkins, it's going to be hard to win three, four, five straight games when you get to Big Ten play. Here's why I don't think it's smart to do this build. And it, we're, we're past the point of why you shouldn't do this build, right? I talked about it all offseason. Eight assists, 15 turnovers. Oh, we can we can disagree with the point guard thing. Point guard thing is its own, own story. But they're stuck now, right? That's kind of like they're now we're here. Right. And they're this is not the only game they're going to have 15 turnovers because they have to play Ty Rogers in – a 30 minute roll. And I, I don't think he's capable. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, but, I've seen it. I don't but, think he's capable. But also I I just I don't think it's fair. I I know we can harp on the whole point guard situation. I feel like that's just beating a dead horse at this point. It's the but, story of the team though. I know, but unfortunately the team is built the way it's built right now. And that is that Coleman has to show. And I don't want to repeat what Sweeney said, but I am going to repeat it as a hooper. You have a guy coming into your house that basically is you. Like, it, it, you don't want to make things bigger than the team. But in his mind, there's no way Coma's not like, this guy also is coming into my house. And I ain't like, also is their Coleman Hawkins. Like, I'm their also, whatever term you want to use. And you let him come into your house and outplay you and play better than you. And you just, you can't have that. There's got to be like some type of just juice or pride going on inside of you and I think that Coleman also needs to realize that he is so damn important to this like he can't have these nights he can't like it that's not the way this team is set up you need Terrence Shannon and you need Coleman every night and then you need the role players to play to the role and honestly tonight outside of Gary I thought like the role players did okay like you got out you got your shots out of the mask you got your shots out of Goody but you didn't get it was really just Goody though yeah the mass shot well didn't you? the mass is starter okay but i'm saying like, like but, I'm at but, the, still, the but, rest but that's bench. but that's still a role guys i mean i'm not even looking sure. at that i'm just looking at major minutes that's guys fair. major role guys that's fair like you just need your batman and your robin to play well otherwise it's just terrence shannon by himself out there it's not gonna look good yeah that's fair the rest of the bench did nothing that's what i'm hinting at gibbs lawhorn nothing Harmon, nothing hansberry nothing danger nothing and uh, one of the odder oddities of the early college basketball season for at least Carter and I's perspective is that Dane Danger has gone from like good Big Ten center to totally unplayable. He played three minutes tonight. 
And for the record, we watched those three minutes. He was horrible in those three minutes. <laughs> like I, I came fully prepared to come on here and be like free day Nadja. He was horrible in those three minutes. Like I, I don't even think us as the biggest fans can sit here and say free day Nadja. I think if Illinois had its way, there would have been like an amicable split this off season when his stock was a little higher and they could just like slide it. Yeah, Monty I mean, Barry is yeah, back up five. Well, he'd be a two time though, wouldn't he? Yes. So, right. Yeah, right. So. No, there was no there was no way of doing it. Mm-hmm. But, but looking like looking like looking back, Dame Danger does not fit on how this team wants to play, right? Like you're gonna play Coleman in the five. That's cool. It's 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 the best way to maximize Coleman. And then you have this freshman Amani Hansberry, who's a high motor, high work rate rebounder, active guy around the rim. Whereas Dame, you have to throw it to him on the block, right? Like Illinois offense never runs through the block, right? Like Coleman Hawkins is never catching it uh, in the low post, back, backing you down, backing you down. Dane is a unique player. Dane is a Dane can be a weapon in certain situations, but I just think it's hard for you to fit in, right? Like there, it is easy for like that Eddie Johnson, Jamal Crawford, like small guard who comes in and puts up shots to just come into the game, put the ball in his hands. All right, go do your thing, rip up the offense, right? It's really hard to do that with a big. And that's what Dane Danger is. Like Dane Danger is a like he he's a he's a combo guard who plays All right. I didn't mean to come. All right, free Dane. We didn't we didn't want to come in free Dane, but now I'm saying free Dane. So here here's but, my okay, issue. Hold on. Let, let, can I ask this though? If Coleman's playing the way he's playing tonight, right? You have Dane at your disposal. Right. Why are you how many minutes did Coleman play tonight? Coleman played 30 minutes. Dane played three minutes. I see. I love Coleman, but if Coleman's playing the way he played tonight, like maybe throw Dane if, out there and see how yeah, it goes. Well, at, right, right. at least for a stretch, you know what but, I'm saying? Like let's put minutes. it this way: if they weren't willing to even really entertain the idea of Dane just bullying Oso, mm-hmm. how what does that say about what Dane has been in practice? Here's my issue. Here's my issue with this. <laughs> Here's no. Here's my issue with this, and I I know I'm alone in this. Greg, I know Greg, Greg hates practice. By the way, I know I know that I am going to get shit for this from any Illinois fan watching our video. Hey, hold on, we we saw one Illinois fan in the FanDuel Sportsbook tonight, and he did. said he appreciates what you do. We did. That, that, I'm gonna, that counts. I'm gonna I'm gonna be totally honest with this, and you, you joke about it. Oh, I hate practice. Here's why I do hate practice because there's no public record of practice. What whatever people tell us happened in practice, we haven't seen to know if it actually happened or not. Coaches will use practice as their narrative for whatever the hell they I'm sure Xavier Booker's been horrible in practice, right? I'm sure Madi Sissoko's been killing it in practice. I won't say that, but right? I know for a fact I'm that sure. Xavier Booker has been struggling in practice. Yeah, well, I, I know for a fact Madi Sissoko's been crushing it in practice. Here's the point. Dane Danger won them basketball games last year. Say whatever the hell you want to do. We witnessed it. We went he, to he Champaign. He won one basketball game last year. That's a basketball game. You said basketball game. Dane Danger won them a basketball game. I saw it with my own eyes. Because who, okay? who did he play? I love Dane. He played Monty Sissoko. Exactly. That, that's what it is. Monty Sissoko is the modern day slump bus. I disagree. Like, you're bringing a big here. Come on. All right. Great time. I think he had games. In fact, I, I am willing to look up game logs from day danger right now if you're gonna make me i think he had it the point is he had an impact on last year's team Mm -hmm. and it's my issue here is not specific to dane my issue here is a consistent thing that has happened to brad underwood's program guys that have made an impact one year are suddenly relegated to no role the next year for little to no reason other than they don't fit what we want to do look he never knows what he wants to do. He doesn't know what he wants to do. So, it changes every month. So I will say this. And I think this has been discussed enough that like putting this like somewhat uh, like not public thing out there, it's not an issue. No one at Illinois thought that Colin Hawkins was coming back. Like this offseason was not approached. The, there, there was no part of Brad Underwood on May 1st that was operating this offseason in the way that they recruited, thinking we will have Coleman Hawkins back. And I think when you got to June 1st, and all of a sudden he was, because the NBA feedback was bad and his pre-draft was not well-run, agency stuff, whatever. 
all right, like what can we do with what we have now, right? Because without Coleman Hawkins, you have Gary A as your four, you have Dane and Hansberry as your fives. It all kind of adds up okay. But Coleman has to play, right? And I, and I understand your point, which is that, look, Coleman's playing bad. Let's get him off the floor. I think Underwood probably looked up and said, all right, like Coleman's back now. Coleman's a weapon. Coleman's 6'10". He's very skilled. He can pass. He can shoot the ball. He is best as a five, though. Like, we watched Coleman Hawkins say he is not, like, like, as a power forward, he struggles. As a five, he's, like, he he, he makes an impact because he can do some of the stuff that Oso does. He can, he can pass, and he can play make, and he can pull bigs away from the rim. So he has to be a five. So if he has to be a five, and we can't lose Imani Hansberry because he's a big part of our future. He's an act- active rim running big that we really like and plays hard and it's like an everyday guy, as you will. He's a big part of the future now. Is he a big part of the future next year? I think so. I mean, it him, changes and Mar- every him, year. him and Marez Johnson, yeah. It changes but, every single year but, under Brad Underwood. But, but you, see, like, like, you see how Dane gets kind of lost in the shuffle here, right? What guys don't get lost in the shuffle, though? Like but, but, okay, but I, I know I know what you're going at, but at the same time, guys get lost in the shuffle in college basketball all the time. But guys, I'm okay with actual guys getting lost in the shuffle that haven't earned significant production. Are we? And I feel like Dane Danger is like. I mean, the you next said you coming like you, Dane, you, did, you did say your, you did say yourself his three minutes today were bad, but oh, Dane, Dane was I'm a saying, problem for Illinois last year on yeah. a team that was not good. I thought, he, he oh, was. whoa, whoa, he was. But whoa, hold, on, all, hold on, a second. It's good last year. I don't think Illinois would agree with that. But but what I'll say is this: like it, it, in the off season, I feel like everyone was saying at least this is what I was saying. So I I won't say everyone. I was saying I actually see Illinois having depth this season i think they have legitimate they could play 10 guys on this basketball team so to me in a game where one guy isn't playing well why are you not giving another guy some extended run i'm just taking this on a game by game basis and in this game i don't think that based on how coleman was playing that dane should play three minutes i think that it should be so obviously obviously Though, you know, it, it, it's based on matchups. It's based on a lot of things going on during the game. But just looking at it from a overview, a very broad standpoint, with the way Coleman was playing, if I'm Dane also, Dane's like, I mean, Coleman's not. I mean, it's it's natural in basketball. Be like, okay, he's not really having an impact, and I don't even have a chance to show what I can do. Like, that's that just doesn't seem right. I think Dane's too talented for that not to be given okay. a chance. Well, one stat. Last year, oh, you, you had this ready. You had this ready. Last year, this, this is I don't sweet, even know what that module. This, this is on Sweetie's home screen. This is this is per hoop explore against top one hundred opponents. Never heard about that until today. against top one hundred opponents. Not a ball. No. Illinois, the pot. Illinois was fifteen point four points per one hundred possessions worse with Dane Danger on the floor than off. That this year, last year, last year. Okay, like they like Dane. I, I, I do not hate Dane. I think Dane is a fun player. I think Dane is a weapon in certain scenarios. I think he's a great player. But I don't mix. blame I don't blame uh, Illinois for game, rebuilding game. its team around other guys. And I don't blame them riding the horses like Coleman Hawkins, even if he's struggling, because I just think he's too weird a player comparative to how they want to play. That's totally fair. I'm I'm totally fine with that being the end result. All I'm saying is I think at minimum Dane is like a good backup big that I'm shocked is only getting three minutes, like gar- three garbage time minutes. I'm shocked that that is what he's been relegated to, and I don't think this is the first time that a productive player one year has been relegated to that the next year. Last thing because we're not gonna make this whole episode, even though this is a very long episode at this point. Sure. Coming into this game, we did the game preview. I was bringing up the fact that this could be a game that Dane could play. Yeah, you got to stop that. Well, I'm saying, like, I guess to me, an undersized front court, I feel like this was a game that Dane could could dominate. You've said that three straight games, though, to open the season. Have I? Yes. I'll go, I'll literally cut it off in the clip. But but he did (laughs) against against Eastern Illinois, he had 14 points. He's capable of that's why I'm confused. Carter, you would have scored like 12 against Eastern Illinois. That's crazy. I wouldn't have. Hamlin's tough. 
<laughs> Carter gave me a tough seven today, by the way. I it did. was seven four. We were late to the Champions Classic. Right, hold on. We, we need to like put this gigantic mass of pizza that Greg is just grabbing onto the screen. Like, what is happening here? Nice piece of pizza. Hey, we, even I got this my, at this time of night is just insane. Move by you're, as you're on your second. I piece. mean, it is. Order, piece. yeah. DoorDash. And- Hey, deep dish. We at- have a full bag of sides, by the way. I haven't even tapped into that's for, <laughs> that's for after we, we we stop recording. Uh, okay, fun fun episode today. I feel like we spent the entire Illinois section on Dane. That's not necessarily what I intended. Uh, let's just do a quick around the horn. More or less concerned about Illinois after this game. Does it matter? Does it not? They lost at home to a top five team, Marquette. Are you more concerned? Yes or no, sweetie? Marginally more because somehow I just never saw a world where they lost this game. Mm. Like I thought I thought there was no and I give Kolik credit and I think Marquette's really good. But like I woke up this morning like a hundred percent confident that Illinois wins this game at home. Like if Illinois is a really good team, if they're a top twenty, top fifteen team. This is a game they win at home. Unless unless my view of Marquette changes in the next two months, which is they're, they are the line between good and great. If if Illinois can't win that game at home, we have to start worrying, Is Illinois have, does Illinois have a chance to be great? Illinois is the blank best team in the Big Ten. Third? Still? Who's second? Well, geez, I guess I have to consider Michigan for this now, don't I? Uh, I mean, I still think it's... I, I don't know. I guess I think it's Purdue, Michigan, Illinois, Michigan State. Wow. Wow. Okay. It's like, I guess it feels like a hot take right now. Okay. Final question for me to both of you. We've done this, you and I, a bunch. Every time we had a segment, we ended with this. It's the round of 32, and they're in a dogfight against Eric Musselman. They're down six with three minutes left. Who's on the floor for Illinois? For Illinois? Yep. Who's on the floor? Down six, three minutes left in your season, round of 32. Who's on the floor? I love repeating things. I'm up for Illinois. I know you're talking about Illinois. Uh, it's going to be Justin Harmon, Terrence Shannon. <laughs> that's crazy. That's the first name. It, I, that's trust insane. me. Come March, that's who it's going to be. I promise you. That's insane. It'll be Justin Harmon. It'll be Terrence Shannon. It'll be Damask. It'll be Gary A. And it'll be Coleman. Same answer. Yes. That's the. I, that's actually, it. Hold on. I can't. You know what? Fuck. Ty Rogers is on the floor, not Justin Harmon. <laughs> if Illinois has a chance, like if Illinois is, pl- if, if Illinois is playing for a Sweet Sixteen, they gotta ride the guy that they kept calling Andre Jackson. Like if he's actually Andre <laughs> Jackson, he has to play, not Justin. That pass tonight was not Andre Jackson. No. Can Andre- we just? You didn't see oh, it, did you? No, no, no. Trust me. Every like like. Every coach in America has had an athletic non-shooting wing and has convinced has played off a player comparison that makes this player useful. And usually it doesn't work. But Andre Jackson has just emboldened like three full years of coaches into thinking that there's will. Yeah. And I I saw moments from top. Like I've seen I've seen it in the Kansas game. I've seen it like I do think Illinois is doing some smart stuff with dribble handoff stuff. With the way they're using him off the ball, like I think Ty Rogers will be a good player for Illinois this season. As a four. Did you see the pass tonight, though? I didn't see the pass tonight. That's it. Worrying... See, okay, we're going to show you the pass. We're going to show you the pass. Literally, we're going to show you the pass. I was all in on everything Sweeney just said until we saw the pass. You Cause, saw the pass. Because actually, Ty Rogers was playing well. I was going to find the pass. Right. At the end of the day, that, that, that's the question, right? In March, is he so. Is he so scared of playing in a high level, okay, as a but, high level scorer that he's making decisions that hurt the team? Right, that's a decision. If if this play is as bad as everyone says it claims to be, that is a decision that hurts the team. Right? Okay, but also in March, do we care what Illinois starting lineup is? Because at any point, no. What's the closing lineup? I'm oh, sorry. Do we care what the closing lineup? Yes, is? I don't because I'm gonna have Terrence Shannon on the floor, and I feel good about that. Do you feel better about Terrence Shannon than Tyler Cohen? Like that was my question to you before we clicked mm-hmm. record last night mm-hmm. was what's the bigger mismatch? Terrence Shannon versus the Marquette guard slash wings. They're going to mm-hmm. guard him or Tyler Cohen versus Illinois. No point guard. But like I said, I thought Terrence. Sh- yeah, but Terrence Shannon could have played better tonight. 
And still, I thought Shannon played great tonight. I thought he played great. No, he didn't. He did not. You don't think so? No, he didn't. I think he. Right. I think he missed some shots that he normally takes. If, right. but if the bar for Terrence is first team All American for this team to be actually as good as everyone wants it to be, we're going to be disappointed, right? Because it's the reason Terrence Cannon's still in college for his COVID year. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, also, they're airing Hunter Dickinson highlights in the background of this at one in the morning, two in the morning. What are we? I hate my life right now. I can't believe this is where we're at. Let's.